Hello again uh, to our uh, Armenian, Ameri uh, Armenian American Perspective program. Today we have a very special guest. We have with us, along with Do Martin Harutunyan, we have Dr. Vahe Gasparian, um, who is in Yerevan currently. If those of you that are not familiar, um, Dr. Gasparian is a is a heart surgeon with um, not only just a simple heart surgeon, he actually has techniques that if uh, Mr. Gasparian can correct me if I'm wrong, that he has uh, invented, for lack of a better word, that are being used currently. Um, he has been in conferences and trainings uh, throughout the world, uh, from Singapore to the United States. And he is also a council member of the National Democratic Alliance. Um, good morning, Martin. Good afternoon. Good day, uh, Dr. Gasparian. Um, Hello. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I think the the question for most Armenian Americans that are that are not familiar with your path to become uh, at the forefront of the liberation of Armenia is how does uh, someone who is very busy, very uh, spe uh, very specialized in his field and has done so much in his field, go from being a heart surgeon to becoming, uh, like I said, at the forefront of the liberation movement, uh, which I think is is what we can call it to simplify it. So please, Dr. Gasparian. Yeah, I was forced to do that because the, uh, back in 2020, when I did my military service in uh, Sionik, uh, Zangezur Garrison Hospital during the 44 days war, uh, and uh, I, I, I've seen all, all the casualties, all the, and I heard the stories of, uh, uh, of, of the terrible stories of surrenders and uh, uh, traitors. Uh, uh, happened that time, I realized that we are uh, living in a crucial and important and, and, and decisive moment of our history. And um, uh, it, it became obvious to me that we have to change the whole system of the statehood here in Armenia. Uh, otherwise, we, we, we're going to lose uh, the sovereignty of the country and the statehood itself. So although I love my specialty, I'm fond of it and, uh, and I miss my, my uh, surgery, my job. Uh, but I realized that I can't do my uh, surgery realizing that uh, that uh, my country is in a, in a deep crisis. So hopefully I'll, I'll uh, come back to my specialty uh, the very next day when uh, the, the, the country is saved and when the national government is formed. Uh, I, I uh, it, it's my obligation to help my colleagues in this national liberation uh, fight. And I think it's an obligation of, of every uh, Armenian uh, human being uh, currently. <laughs> so to, to paraphrase probably one of the most famous Armenian Americans, Monte Melkonyan, who has that famous recording when he says, this is the time to leave everything, leave your job, <laughs> your family. Exactly. It's so exactly. Exactly. You 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 can't go to the operating room and uh, do your surgery your surgery, uh, realizing that uh, something uh, crucial uh, is, is happening in the country at the same time. Uh, if you are compassionate, if you are a patriotic person, uh, because uh, I know many many others who are uh, living uh, their comfortable life. And who who don't care about what's happening now in the in the country, but anyway, I, I'm not the person like this. So <laughs> it was my decision. Thank you but, for but the I, I love I love my search. I my I love my job and I miss it every day. So I look forward to returning to my specialty once I'm able to do it. Great. Well, Dr. Gasparian, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. We really appreciate it. Um, I think first and foremost, what is um, uh, of interest to the American Armenian community right now is the current situation of what's happening in Armenia, especially in regards to Davush. Um, in my conversations with with the community members here in the Boston area, a lot of Armenian Americans are not are not. In, in aware of the current situation, just because 
there aren't enough resources in the English language to make them aware of this. Um, so if you could fill us in about what is going on there, I think that I, I, I hope you agree with me. That I think that's the primary uh, issue right now uh, in regards to um, events in Armenia. Yeah, what's happening now in Tavos region is part of the broad uh, plan and uh, scheme of the uh, um, absorption of uh, Armenia by Russian and Turkish uh, allies. Uh, we call this uh, Putin Lavrov plan, uh, which started in uh, back in 2016 uh, during so-called four days war. Uh, but they failed to do it that time, uh, and it was postponed. Uh, so they uh, returned to, to the Lavrov plan uh, back in 2020, and the 44 days war was just the beginning of the, of the plan. Uh, the next steps uh, are uh, Armenia itself uh, after, uh, after Artsakh. Now is uh, the turn for Armenia itself. And Azeris, Turkish, and Russians, uh, they do their best uh, to uh, force Armenia to make the next uh, surrenders, uh, successions, uh, either territorial or uh, juridical uh, in terms of the signing so-called peace treaty, peace agreement, which is, uh, in fact, a capitulation agreement. And the final goal of the Lavrov plan is to... Uh, to um, uh, to force Armenia uh, and to make it losing uh, sovereignty uh, and territorial integrity uh, and prevent uh, Western partners entering the region. So Tavush is uh, crucial in in the, in this regard because uh, this is not just the problem and the question of four villages. This is the question of the. Uh, control over the state uh, road uh, connecting Armenia with Georgia, uh, control over the uh, gas uh, pipeline, and uh, over the large territory of Tavush and Lori region. So this is uh, part of Armenian blockage, uh, territorial, uh, military, and economical blockage uh, uh, now from the northeast uh, part of our territory. Uh, and the next will be Sunik, uh, the next will be uh, uh, the, the village called uh, Yeras Havan, Tigran Ashen, which is important in terms of connecting Armenia uh, with uh, Zangezur, with, with Sunik. So this, uh, all these are the, the single, uh, the, uh, are the parts of the single plan, Lavrov uh, Putin plan. And uh, it, it's important to understand that Russian and Turkish uh, allies, uh, they started uh, their, their uh, job back in 1920 when uh, joint Russian-Turkish aggression took place and they uh, occupied an annexed uh, independent Armenian Republic back in 1920 and uh, Moscow, so-called Moscow Treaty was signed at that time, which was... Um, uh, illegal, uh, and uh, uh, as you may know, uh, and our uh, uh, audience, Armenian order, audience may know, uh, this, according to Moscow Treaty, uh, some territories of independent Armenian Republic were, were surrendered to Turkey, like Kars and Surmalu regions, and the others, like Artsakh and Nakhichevan, uh, were uh, donated or given to uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, so and and they kept this uh, status quo in the region for more than hundred years, and now they are doing their best to fix this uh, juridically, or, or, or forcing by forcing Armenia to sign the so-called uh, peace treaty and making those territorial surrender surrenders. Um, uh, I think uh, when when calling on our Western partners, I would like to reiterate uh, that uh, they should uh, change the whole perception of Armenia as a statehood. Uh, they should look at the Armenia not as a sovereign country which needs helps and uh, help and reforms, but they should finally realize that Armenia is not an independent state. 
uh, it, it, although formally it's uh, considered to be an independent formally, uh, but in fact, Armenia is uh, occupied and colonized country for more than 30 years, starting from the very first day of so-called independence back in 1991. Uh, and uh, we call this uh, hybrid occupation uh, because uh, there is a, a, a direct and indirect uh, occupation of Armenia, direct in terms of the military base of the Russia in Gyumri, and indirect in terms of the collaborationist and colonial administrations uh, ruling Armenian government. Uh, presidents like Ter Petrosyan, Kocharans, and Sarkisian, the previous leaders, so-called leaders of Armenia, and the current one, which is prime minister, but again, puppet of the Kremlin. And uh, this is the reality our Western partners should realize and uh, and they should uh, plan uh, their uh, steps, uh, uh, realizing this 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 reality reality and considering those facts that I told you. Otherwise, uh, we are going to fail because this is you know this is the most important and uh, historic and crucial time of our modern history, and we have no right. We have no right. Uh, to make any mistakes anymore. Uh, when I say we, I mean uh, Armenian people itself and our Western partners also. Uh, and uh, I would uh, I would like to say that the United States of America uh, failed to take over Armenia three times before. Uh, first, it happened in 1920. Second time was 1991. And the third time was 1999, October 27. Uh, so now is the, the four and the last chance uh, for the United States and our Western partners to proceed with the occupation of Armenia and helping Armenia to form the national government and to change its uh, uh, foreign policy vector, military vector, and uh, help helping Armenia to become a, a, a part of the civilized world. Thank you. Dr. Gasparian, many in the diaspora uh, bring up that point that, well, the West has betrayed us no numerous times. How can we trust them again? And they also, many in the diaspora say, well, Russia is protecting our borders. We are lost without Russia. How do you address this? Well, I would not uh, call this betrayal. Uh, look, what happened in 1920, uh, the, the situation that time was not in favor of Armenia because uh, although we had uh, our Western allies, United States, Britain, France, uh, uh, but that time the, the, um, the situation was that uh, was not so favorable for us in terms of Bolsheviks and Turks uh, entering the region and the Western partners uh, they were tired of the war and they were leaving the region. Uh, now is the totally different time and a totally different uh, situation because now uh, Russian empire is weakening and is leaving the region first. And the second is um, that the uh, Western partners are entering the region. They are coming in. They are not leaving the region. We can see these... Uh, when we we watch the uh, the statements and and uh, military help from the France, uh, the statements of the United States, uh, State Department, and other other institutions, uh, the second time in 1991, again this was not the betrayal, but like uh, it was illusion uh, and uh, delusion. You know, the Western partners thought that the Russia. Yeltsin's Russia after the United U USSR collapse is uh, a democratic uh, country anymore, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the country that is not going to uh, to use the uh, pressure on its uh, neighbors, uh, imperialistic uh, uh, policy uh, towards its neighbors. So they 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 left uh, post-Soviet countries, uh, post-Soviet republics except Baltic states, they left them under Russian influence uh, and they left uh, those countries become 
uh, part of the CIS and CSTO, believing that the Russia is a, a democratic and, and fair country anymore. This was a mistake, not the betrayal. Uh, so I think uh, the reality now is that the Western partners um, uh, got the lessons from the mistakes in the past. And they, they realize now that uh, the only solution is to uh, help those countries uh, colonized and occupied by Russia to get its real sovereignty. And in terms of Armenia, this is very important also because uh, the, our Western partners have their strategic interest in the region in terms of the uh, deterring uh, Chinese uh, expansion, economic expansion, in terms of deterring uh, pan-Islamic uh, and pan-Turkish plans of Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Pakistan, and in terms of north, uh, north-south or south-north uh, project uh, connecting uh, uh, India and Iran uh, with the Black Sea and with the Europe. So we have joined uh, interests. Uh, Armenia and the Western partners, we have joint interests and the national interest of Armenia and the people uh, coincide with those of our Western partners. Mm -hmm. so, so this, this makes me optimistic uh, now, <laughs> unlike vaccine. <laughs> now you're going to be going a lot. No, go ahead, go for it. I'm sorry, Mark, to follow up on your question, um, I know and I'm sure Martin can attest to it that uh, but there's a good portion of the Armenian American community that believes that Nikol Pashinyan is Western minded. And it is because of that that uh, Putin is uh, punishing us because he's leaving Putin and he's going to the West. Uh, can you say a few words to clarify that, please? Okay, first, I want to go back to the previous question uh, regarding uh, so called protection of Russian. Uh, uh, forces uh, protection of our interests and our people. There is no protection. There was no protection. There is no protection and there will be no protection from Russian side. And we have seen uh, it so many times in the history in, in, in 100 years ago and in uh, in the 90s. And, and we have seen it now just recently when there was an ethnic cleansing in Artsakh. Uh, Russians did nothing to help our Armenians in Artsakh to survive. The peacekeeping uh, Russians. <laughs> So-called peacekeepers, yes, so-called peacekeepers. They More than that, they helped Azeris to proceed with, with ethnic cleansing. And uh, the same behavior we have seen during the 44 days war. I was uh, one of the witnesses uh, in, um, uh, in Garrison Hospital in Sunik. Uh, and the soldiers and the officers of Armenian army, they told me the stories of Russian betrayals. Uh, you know, failed supply of the weapons, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Many, many stories of the uh, betrayals from the Russian side. So forget about Russian help and Russian support. There is a, uh, there is a, uh, well-known uh, proclamation, we need Armenia without Armenians, um, uh, stated by and made by Lobanov Rostovsky, who was the foreign minister of Russian government uh, back in the uh, 19th century. Uh, so they, they followed uh, those policy for more than 200 years of the colonization of Armenia, uh, starting from Tsar time, uh, and uh, and coming to to current days, so Armenia, Armenian territory, people, and interests, uh, Russians used only as a bargaining uh, uh, bargaining, uh, you know, uh, tool bargaining, yeah, bargaining coin, bargaining coin for for their policy, imperialistic policy. Uh, when uh, coming back to the last question regarding um, uh, so-called pro-Western policy of Pashinyan, this is a bullshit. Ex excuse me, but this is a bullshit. His uh, Kremlin puppet is a um, uh, fully dependent person, uh, and um, you know all, all, all the steps uh, of Pashinyan, uh, starting from 2018. And uh, going uh, to to current days, 
prove my my statement about Pashinyan being a Kremlin puppy. <laughs> He never did. Uh, he never did the realistic stay uh, step towards the West. Just the proclamation, declaration, just uh, blah blah blah, just the words, but not a single step. Uh, he, he he says Armenia is going to leave the CSTO, but we we never see see it. He says uh, Armenia uh, uh, is asking uh, Russian uh, border officers to leave the uh, Zvartnots airport. Uh, we we uh, never see it yet. Uh, he says um, uh, we want to we want to change our uh, foreign policy vector, but still we are the members of all uh, pro-Russian organizations. So you know those are uh, the statements and the declarations just to uh, manipulate, uh, just to make an illusion. Uh, and uh, make a political uh, manipulation and imitation of changing the vector just to keep its uh, chair of the prime minister. Uh, I, I'm sure Pashinyan uh, does realize that uh, sooner or later uh, Putin's regime will collapse and he is now trying to save his uh, uh, position as a prime minister of Armenia at any cost. But uh, on the contrary, we see the steps towards Turkey, we see the steps towards Azerbaijan, surrenders, successions, territorial, all those steps are real steps uh, towards the Russian-Turkish allies and their plans and goals. Uh, so never, never trust Pashinyan and never, never believe uh, his words and his statements. Uh, Kremlin uh, brought Pashinyan to power back in 2018 uh, and did its best to keep Pashinyan in power because Pashinyan is the best tool possible for the Kremlin and for Baku and Ankara to proceed with Lavrov plan. And the Kremlin helped Pashinyan to uh, recover and re to be re-elected in those snap elections back in 2021 uh, to continue uh, the policy of uh, so-called uh, Lavrov plan. So now uh, they need the last surrenders uh, uh, from Pashinyan. Uh, and, and only after that, Pashinyan will go and the next puppet of the Kremlin will come. And this is again a well-written scenario uh, and agreed with, with Pashinyan and Kremlin and Baku and Ankara. Um, uh, uh, what we see now in Tavush is what I said. So uh, uh, Pashinyan will do last surrenders, and then Kremlin will will uh, organize some kind of uh, state coup or uh, insurrection uh, in Armenia uh, to uh, change uh, Pashinyan and bring another puppet. But this th th this is not because Pashinyan is not. Uh, serving Kremlin anymore. This is because uh, he 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 is finished any anymore. He he fi he, he uh, finished his mission, and he has to be changed. Like they changed Serge Sarkisian in two thousand eighteen, not because Sarkisian was not the Kremlin agent, because his mission, his historic mission, was over, and they needed uh, the new person, new instrument, and new tool. Uh, to proceed uh, with with the uh, Lavrov plan, you see what I mean? Because e every historic period, Kremlin needs uh, the the tool, the instrument, the person suitable for that time. Uh, a fresh a fresh face to fool the people again. Mm. Yes, the, exactly, fresh face. Like they they brought uh, Ter Petrosian to power who is a KGB, well-known KGB agent, and this is a documented, well-documented fact. Uh, and uh, he, he, they, they started the so-called independence of Armenia with uh, Levonter Petrosian, and then they needed to change Petrosian and bring uh, Kocharian to power because uh, Petrosian uh, was... was uh, uh, not popular in the Armenian population that time anymore. So they, they need to change the regime. Uh, 
Uh, and then again, uh, to change Kocharian with Serge Sarkisian, and then Serge Sarkisian uh, with uh, Pashinian, and so on and so on. So this is a well-known policy. Uh, the, the only uh, goal for the Kremlin is to keep the control over the Armenia and other countries like uh, Georgia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, uh, and uh, never, never let the people of this country uh, make its uh, sovereign choice and bring uh, the, the person who is popular in the population. Uh, so the, the so-called Velvet Revolution in 2018 was false and well-written scenario revolution written in the Kremlin. And um, I think our Western partners should realize that they have no right to uh, waver to waver now because if they will waver with with uh, with uh, changes in Armenia, uh, they will uh, they will have to force with the next uh, state coup here in Armenia, and uh, the next puppet will come to power, uh, and it will be much more difficult to proceed with uh, with changes that time because uh, once uh, the regime is changed, uh, Kremlin will will increase the control over the Armenia. and uh, this is the very time for our Western partners to help NDA, to proceed with uh, uh, with uh, uh, uprise of Armenian people, to proceed with uh, uh, forming uh, a national uh, transitional government, uh, we have to realize another uh, another very important thing that uh, for the countries like Armenia, Ukraine, for post-Soviet republics, if we want to change the system. And we we want to go from from oligarchic, criminal, colonial system to the uh, democratic one. We have to go through the transitional period. Period. We have to go. There is no other way. No election. No reforms. If if you look at the elections uh, happen in Armenia and other uh, countries in Soviet Union, you can't uh, you can't show me one example of the elections when there was a power change. Every time uh, in all those elections uh, in Armenia, the regime, ruling regime, reproduced itself. So we have to go through the transitional period and proceed with the transitional justice, illustration, to clear the political, economical, and military field of our country from the agents, from Russian and foreign agents. And only after that, when you have a sovereign political field, you can, you can, and, and, and you have adopted a new constitution with the balanced uh, branches of the power, you have to go, you, you, can, you can think about the new elections, snap elections, transparent elections, free elections, etc. But first of all, transitional period. No other way, no other choice. Dr. Gasparian, we know that you're going to be going live uh, in a little bit to uh, address the Armenian people uh, in the Armenian language. Um, could we just get a quick summary of what you're going to be talking about uh, for our English-speaking audience? Yeah, I, I will uh, up, update uh, my audience, Armenian people, about, on the recent developments in Tabush, in Russia, about terroristic attack, etc. I will update uh, our uh, Armenian population about my uh, vision of, of the next uh, events uh, which are going to happen inside the Kremlin in Russia and the Ukraine battlefield. Because what's happening there is important to us because uh, uh, weakening of the Putin's regime is the only pre precondition and prerequisite for us to be able to deoccupate our country. And uh, my message will be that the momentum of uh, X momentum, the momentum of truth is coming because uh, Putin's regime is weakening uh, every day on a daily basis. And once uh, Putin's regime is collapsed, we have to go on the street and, and to, to proceed with the, the occupation of our country. So um, weakening of, or, or collapse of the Putin's regime first, then uprise of Armenian people second, and 
help from the Western partners third in terms of um, deterring uh, police here in Armenia, in terms of calling police and special services here in Armenia to uh, refrain from violence. Because, you know, uh, they uh, use the force, brutal force against uh, peaceful uh, protesters uh, for more than 30 years uh, during the, the last uh, years of, of our modern history, because they know, they knew and they know that the Russian leader Vladimir Putin is supporting them and uh, is helping them and is covering them. So uh, once the Putin's regime is collapsed, they will not, uh, I, I hope, they will realize that, uh, they, that their brutal regime days is over anymore. But again, Western partners should call on them, remind them, and, and, uh, and make a strong, um, send a strong message to police here in Armenia to refrain from violence because a national democratic alliance is going to deoccupate Armenia from Russian occupation using uh, civil disobedience as a tool, as a method, which is civil, uh, not, not, not forceful, but civil, but disobedience uh, method of uh, protest. And this is every right of every people to go to the street to use its uh, sovereign uh, uh, rights and power, uh, because uh, the people of each country is the uh, real host of its statehood. Uh, but uh, Western partners should uh, support us, uh, like they did uh, in Georgia, in Ukraine, during Maidan before, uh, to to deoccupate Armenia. And if uh, once this is done, Armenia will become uh, reliable, uh, trustful and committed partners of the European Union, of the United States, of Western partners here in, in South Caucasus, which is very important for our Western partners because this region is uh, uh, one of the most important regions for the Western partners to deter Chinese expansion. And um, uh, uh, sp a former speaker of the uh of the uh, united states uh uh house speaker uh, former house speaker nancy pelosi if you remember when she has visited uh, armenia back in 2022 she's she put armenia in one row together with ukraine and taiwan so united states re does realize the fact that armenia is a very much important country but uh, real only realizing is not enough. They we will need their support when the when the time will come, when the X momentum will come. And we have a few minutes left, and uh, I wanted to touch again on the Tabush region. Uh, also, I think a misnomer that the um, uh, Nikol Pashinyan regime and Nikol Pashinyan apologists uh, are trying to convey to the people, saying that oh. It's not really villages. It's just a few rocky places that don't matter. That's what we're giving. Um, and also, Dr. Gaspar, if you can touch on the importance of Voskevar, which is one of the uh, regions, which, uh, as we know, in 1991, when the so-called ring operation, Kalso Operatsa, uh, what Kalso. the Russians did over there and what's happening now in, in just a few minutes, Dr. Gaspar. So Kalso operation, which was the Russian operation uh, back in 1991, it started from Voskepar village and ended with ethnic cleansing in Shaoman and Getashen. So again, about so-called Russian support and Russian help. Uh, they, they helped uh, Azeris to proceed with ethnic cleansing of uh, Getashen and uh, uh, and uh, uh, uh So uh, th this is not the question of just a uh, small four villages. This is the question of total control of the gas pipeline of the state road connecting Armenia with uh, with Georgia. So this is part of the blockage of Armenia, uh, as they want to blockage uh, us, uh, blockade us, uh, uh, closing the Mary corridor. Uh, I mean, opening Zangezur corridor and blocking us from Iran, 
now they are they are proceeding with uh, blocking Armenia from Georgia, which is essential in terms of connecting with uh, Black Sea and Europe. So this is uh, the huge, uh, dangerous uh, surrender, succession. And when uh, when Pashinyan says to the people that this is a small thing, he is just lying and he is manipulating and uh, he is uh, he is a son of the beach. He is a betrayal. Uh, we have to proceed with removal of this guy. He crossed all the red lines and he has no right to stay in power. And we have to do our best to remove his from power, to remove him from his chair of the prime minister as soon as possible. And we hope our Western partners will, will help us because this is, again, in the interests of, uh, of the West itself also. Thank you. And and lastly, to remind our viewers, uh, since this was a very special program uh, with Dr. Vikasvayan's words, please share this to get this out to the uh, Armenian American community that has limited resources and they mostly hear what the Pashinyan propaganda machine is passing on in the United States. So this is alternative news. These are more on the ground. Please share this. And uh, with just one minute, Dr. Gasparian, if you can tell us what can the Armenian American community do? I know number one you're going to say is to come to Armenia, but uh, as you may know, some are limited in that. What would be the second thing they can do? Number one, to come to Armenia and physically be with us. Number second, help us um, psychologically, help us uh, financially. Uh, and help us to to broad uh, the ideas uh, and the ideology of the NDA all over the world, and help us uh, to get uh, well well uh, contacted with our American partners. I would be uh, more than pleased uh, to to have a chance to visit uh, Washington and meet with our Western partners from the State Department, from Congress, from House. Uh, um, so so any kind of help, any type of help is uh, much appreciated from, from Armenia. And uh, just to remind our viewers, uh, to, if, they, if they do want to help uh, financially, uh, Gokor, can you, can you remind us uh, the best way to do that? Um, yeah, and also as a reminder to, to see what the National Democratic Alliance's uh, roadmap is, the plan. They do have a website that is in uh, Armenian as well as in English. It's pretty thorough. It's uh, ajbever.com which is A-J-B-E-V-E-R.com. And there's also a link over there where you can donate. Uh, and uh, one thing to add is that they have been on the ground now. It's into their eighth month. Um, and those people need everything from just the shelter to food to um, just to stay afloat to keep the fight going. They have not once in the last nine months uh, retracted. So please go to the website and help. And once again, thank you, Dr. Gasparian. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gasparian. Up, and we look forward to your live in Armenian. Thank you very much. We will win. No doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely.